Hey to be that guy, but I need the extra credit. Well, I understand. So let's take a look. We started with two is equal to two, but we somehow end up with two is equal to zero. So something must be wrong. But what went wrong though? Well, pause the video now. Think about this first before we watch the solution. Done? Okay, let's go over this. We started with two is equal to one plus one. I agree. And then we put this one as square root of one. I agree. Okay. And then we have one is negative one times negative one. Yeah, right? Because negative one times negative one is of course one. And then we just go backwards. Sure. And then from here to here, we have square root of negative one times another square root of negative one. Okay. And then square root of negative one is i. Likewise, this square root of negative one is also i. i times i is i squared. And then i squared, by definition, we get negative one. And finally, one minus one, we get zero. Uh, spooky, right? Because something must be wrong, but where though? Ready? The answer is from here to here, it's actually not okay. So let me just cross this out. But you might be thinking, don't we do this kind of things all the time? Well, have a look. If we have square root of 4 times 9, can we say that square root of 4 times square root of 9? Well, yes, because on the left hand side, worked out the inside first, we get square root of 36, and that's equal to worked out the square root first here, times this square root. Square root of 36 is 6, 2 times 3 is 6. Yes, this right here is totally okay. And then maybe because we're dealing with negative numbers and also complex numbers, so maybe that's the reason. But be careful. If we have square root of negative 1 times 9, can we say that as square root of negative 1 times square root of 9? The answer is yes, if you consider the principal value of the square root. Here's the deal. This right here gives us square root of negative 9, and this right here is i, right? Square root of negative 1 is i, and then square root of 9 is 3. Square root of negative 9 is indeed equal to 3i. So this right here is 3i equals 3i. Checks. Yeah. But here is the deal. Notice how this and that, they are both negative numbers. In fact, when you have both negative numbers inside and they are multiplying, then in that case, we are not allowed to separate the square roots and then multiply. So let me write that down right here for you guys. If we have A and B being negative numbers, then be super careful. If you are dealing with square root of AB, if you want to say that square root of A times square root of B, in fact, this right here is not correct because this kind of things will happen if you decided to do that if A and B are both negative numbers. So yeah, this is the reason and this is where the mistake is. I know I'm late to <laughs> your response, but hopefully you still got your extra credit anyway because I know other people have replied to this already on Reddit. So yeah, that's it. Hold on. I just remember that I could give you a question for fun, or maybe you can ask your teacher instead. So have a look right here. Let's start with i, and of course this is the same as i to the first power, yeah? Okay, I'm going to write the 1 as 4 over 4, yeah? And then next, I'm going to do this. This is the same as saying 1 over 4 times 4, right? But I'm going to put i to the fourth power first, and then times 1 over 4, yeah? And then by the rule of exponents, we can write this down as i to the 4th raised to the 1 over 4, yeah? And then i to the 4th power is just equal to 1, because again, i squared is equal to negative 1, square both sides, i to the 4th power is 1. So this right here, we have 1 to the 1 over 4th power. 1 to any power is just equal to 1. Haha! -ha! I just showed you that i is equal to 1. So here is what I can have for you. We have all this. Go ahead and have fun with this.